everyone welcome back to my channel relapse tackle in this video we're going to pour up some stand-up football heads using some mustad hooks and some wb 800 wire forms so the bait keeper that they have in there is a metal wire bait keeper instead of the lead formed bait keeper so stay tuned be sure to share the video subscribe for more and uh give it a like so i have my Exhaust fan is running. You probably couldn't hear it because of the microphone. There's a noise canceling. So I'll turn that back on. And that sucks all of the heat and fumes right outside through this six inch aluminum duct work that I ran. So I did write on the top here the different sizes. We're going to be pouring the half ounce and three eighths ounce. So using a four out hook and a three out hook. Um, I did spray the dry graphite in this mold. I like using it. It just makes things pour so much nicer. You end up with less bad pours and it doesn't stick to the lead. So it doesn't affect the paint process. So um, I think that, that is a, a win-win. So this is still warming up. There's still a lot of stuff that hasn't melted yet I'll show you that so all of the stuff that i've clipped off all the sprues and stuff i just set back in there once it cools down i don't like putting them in the lee pot when it's still hot because it could splash and it cools the lead down and there's all kinds of stuff that i don't like about it so i just use this i'll clip them off and i'll put them in there and I also don't clip them off right away. Let the lead set up all the way before I remove them. Um, so you'll notice if you pour jigs, if you clip them off right away, the lead feels really soft. When you cut them with a the flush cutter, it feels super soft. Um, that's because the lead hasn't fully set up and cooled down yet. So let them set up for a few hours and then try to clip them off. It's much harder. And sometimes, I'll pour up a whole bunch of them and just leave them set for a couple of days before I clip them off. And then they, then they feel really hard. So, um, the sleep pot has been dripping a lot more lately. Um, if you're having problems with your leaf pot dripping like crazy, um, there's several things you can do, um, to clean it and make it so that it doesn't drip, but they drip. So, um, chances are you'll get it not drip for a while and then it'll start dripping again. Uh, if you have a heating element or any of that, them components, um, go bad. So the thermostat or element or anything like that, Lee precision will actually replace all of those parts for free. So you can order, you just have to create an account and you can order up all those pieces and, um, you can wait for it to warm up. I might as well. This stand is such a piece of crap. Um, so if you're having problems, you can order all those parts and they're free. So one item, you can put one item per one, one item for this whole thing. Each, each item would be free. If you put a second item in there. So if you put two heating elements in there, You'll have to pay for the second heating element, but if you put just one heating element in the cart, one thermostat, one, you know, um, so you can replace the pot and the, um, the that stem and everything free. You just pay for shipping and handling. And it's not a bad idea to just have a box full of those parts laying around. So what I do or what I did is actually create an account. And got one of every part because they they give them away and just pay shipping so now i have all of those parts sitting in a box so if my lee pot quits working i have the parts that i can just take it apart rebuild it quick and then get back into pouring i don't have to have a second pot laying waiting just in case this one stops working so it's not a not a bad idea just to um, have those spare parts laying around just in case you need them. So, like I said, 
just sitting on the shelf waiting for waiting for that rainy day and keep in mind these things smoke like crazy when you first fire them up so make sure that you are in a well ventilated area I, I'd recommend outside um, unless you have a setup similar to this that you're able to suck all of the fumes and everything out so there's your heating element thermostat and then your plunger little plunger stem so I would definitely I'll put a link in the description for that too and then you just figure out you have to make sure it's the right model that you have and then you can order those parts after you create an account um, and that's one of the great things about Lee is you know everybody complains about them leaking all the time and everything but I mean they they do this so I mean it's not really a big deal and if you're having a lot of problems where um, you might not be able to take care of it yourself you could send it in to them and they will rebuild it for you I'm not sure what that would cost but I'm sure it's cheaper than ordering a whole new pot so if you are having problems with it I'm sure you could reach out to them and send it in and have them fix it um, obviously with mine I modified the stand on it so I don't know they, they probably wouldn't rebuild mine but uh, maybe they would I don't know so it's a great company they're really easy easy going and to do stuff like that so um, it's well worth it to me I'd rather have a company that backs their product like that and just offers the free parts and I mean I, you have to rebuild it yourself but the parts are there for you to do that now we're getting warmed up I'm gonna drop this back down so you can see me pouring these up and uh, I'm gonna burn through these hooks quick because I ran out of football heads and I have some friends that are gonna want these jigs real soon so now we're getting warmed up Ooh, I had a jig from before so I had a jig that uh, didn't form all the way and I put it up I put it oh damn that was probably really loud but I put it in here and it ended up in there I didn't realize it so we're gonna shoot a couple of times just to heat the mold up a little bit more turn the heat down a little bit we're starting to turn a little blue and purple on top so that means it's rapidly oxidizing and it's going to create a lot of extra garbage in your lid so you'll end up with lots of slag trying to get the the angle and the height on this thing where you guys can see what the heck I'm doing so I like using these Teflon pins and then I put a little o-ring on them to hold them in place so like I said we're gonna do the half ounce and the 3 8 ounce so for that we need the Four out for the half ounce, and uh, that's a three two seven eight six N P dash B N four. And that's a four out. So I'm gonna set the hook in there, and then what I do is I'll take my Teflon pin and I actually push it, push it down so it touches touches the hook. I'm actually loading up the wrong side of this mold. I always put everything in the left side so I'm kind of a little backwards right now. 
and then the longer WB800. All right, so close it up. Make sure you wear leather gloves. You don't want that lead splashing on your hands. I would even recommend a long sleeve shirt that doesn't have nylon. You want 100% cotton. And the nylon will melt as well. So there you go. That's the three eighths. That's a half ounce. So half ounce and then three eighths. And that Teflon pin slide right out of there. So I like that a lot. Like I said, this this leaf pot is probably gonna drip. Quite a bit. But I've gotten to the point where I don't care if it drips a little bit. I just catch the drippings with that little cup down there. As long as it's not splashing up, um, it's not a big deal. After it cools down, I put that stuff right back in there and use it again. And try not to let that drip slow me down anymore. And I'll probably speed up now because this is going to be pretty repetitive. But feel free to ask questions in the in the comments. The molds will get warm too, so if you're using your bare hands like this, make sure not to burn yourself. I'm going to try to show you all without this stuff moving around, and probably not going to happen. So I do, I put that Teflon pin right in there so it touches the hook. I like making sure that the fiber weed guards go all the way down to the hook. And that they're in there and glued in there really well. So those are great looking stand up football heads, though. I like them. just uh, easier for me not to wear the gloves when I'm putting the stuff in there because I don't have the dexterity with the gloves on to get everything set. I'm just very careful not to uh, put my hands on the, the mold very long. And I've worked on, I've worked in maintenance pretty much my whole life, so um, my fingers are all messed up. The the whole feeling heat and stuff like that. Dang it. And this is why in my videos, well, most of them, well not most of them, but a lot of them, I have added magnets and stuff. I get tired of stuff just shifting on me all the time. It slows you down if you gotta 
place the same thing in the mold three, four times. And I wanted to say thank you, everybody. Again, we're almost to the 900 subscriber mark, which is cool. And like I said in previous videos, I'd like to just keep on growing the channel. Um, and that's what you guys have helped me do. Keep growing the channel. And keep making comments and stuff. Um, if you want to see something done or you're confused about something I did or you know you want to see another video of me doing something, um, be sure to drop that in the comments so that I can see about making another video or or just um, answering some questions in the comments. So I didn't really warm that mold up very much. And that one actually didn't pour all the way. I just noticed that. A little bit missing on the collar, which is fine. There, you're going to have some that do that. Um, and I prefer to just throw those into my own stash. If you get several of them doing that, then you'll want to warm up the mold a little bit more or add a little dry graphite or smoke them with a candle. Um, I prefer just using the dry graphite versus smoking them with a candle. Um, and once you get the mold warm, you can, I, what I do is I spray that dry graphite on right over my trash can here in my little shop so that you know, oh, any overspray goes right in the trash bag. Not really a huge deal. Just that one. See, like I said, that one did not pour. That one was actually poured poured worse. So um, the hooks might need to warm up a little bit too. But since we weren't having that problem before, and now we are, I'm going to just. Take my dry graphite. I usually do it over a trash can, but I'll just do it right here because I can always wash my bench off. And it dries pretty quick, see? When the mold's hot. And then we have a stainless steel bench, so. not a big deal with it being on the bench because I can just take a Clorox wipe Try to keep things as clean as I can. There you have it. All that crap right on the Clorox wipe and the garbage goes. So, we'll keep on rolling, guys. Keep on rolling. Don't let stuff like that slow you down. Like I said, the hooks might need to be warmed up a little bit. Sometimes you do have to slow down a little bit to just get things prepped. So if you are having that problem, even after doing the dry graphite, you might need to just, you know, set them in there. Let them sit for a little bit. I just put it back up on top of the leaf pot. Um, just make sure that you're your wood handles are sitting off to the side like that. Um, 
they can scorch if you do get them too close to some heat. I always lift them up by the sprue. I don't lift any jigs out by the hook. You can loosen them up. If that lead's not fully set, it's easy to loosen up the hooks in the lead. Now the lead's actually flowing right around the bait keeper. So went from not filling the not filling to kind of overfilling, which is all right. I'd rather see a little bit of lead down there. And sometimes I've even opened up the the, the spot for the hook shank so that. I can get the air that's trapped inside the mold to escape faster and make it so that the lead fills all of the um, skirt collar holder or um, the barbs and stuff. Get, get things just to flow all the way to the bottom as fast as you can to make sure that you don't have any bad pores. I have to open up another bag of my WB 800s here pretty quick. I usually try to have a couple packs of 100 of them laying around, keep them in my bin. So obviously they're not laying around; they're it's organized. Try to keep my stuff as organized as possible. And I do occasionally also sit and pour, but when I'm doing these videos, it's much easier to get the, the camera angle a little bit better um, to just stand and pour. So when I'm not videotaping, I, I will tend to sit. I know some people have made comments before. I don't know how anybody could stand for that long pouring these and on well, my videos and I'm not you know making four or five hour long videos so I don't want to bore you guys that much bumping things
And I also keep my lee pot around half full. I don't tend to fill it up all of the way. You fill it up all of the way, the lead is heavier than the plunger. So it has a tendency to lift the plunger up, especially when it cools down. A lot of people will turn them on and kind of walk away or get stuff ready and not realize that uh, the plunger was lifted up just a little bit when it started to heat up. And then all of the lead just pours out of them because the lead is holding the holding the plunger up. So after we did the dry graphite, things are flowing much nicer, and, and that's that's why I like that stuff so much. It's just another reason why these football head molds are hard to open too is because of the um, the recessed eye on these. So if you look really closely at the let me get these in here and i'll show you but if you look really closely at the jigs when you open up the mold um, one side actually scrapes because of the hinge angle that's why this mold is so hard to open especially if you pour all four of these jigs at once um, you can have problems so you can see it or not but this side this side did not rub this side did. You can see that real shiny kind of, it's rolled back around the edge a little bit. So that side was dragging when it, when it opened. So take a look real closely at yours if you're pouring these jigs and you'll see that scrape mark there. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a razor blade and very carefully scrape just along the edge there where it's rolled over because that's kind of sharp there. Kind of scrape that off a little bit so that it's more smooth. Um, it's not really a huge deal, but um, for some people it might be, but that's just the, the way the mold is designed with the hinge angle, they don't match. So it's, takes a little more to pull them apart. And that's why I will typically only pour one of these jigs at a time or two. I don't tend to pour all four in, in a mold that has a recessed eye like that, <clears throat> especially if they're larger sizes. The larger the size, the harder it's gonna be for you to open.